How's it going? David here. So a lot of you have been worried about the state of the comic market. You've been worried that, hey, I bought this book and it's dropped in half, you know, and or it's dropped by a third or even higher. And some of them are like, oh, but these are big keys. These are like long term blue chip stock comic books types of thing. Well, I'm going to tell you the difference between long term and short term investing. Too many people are so looking at the now and looking at what's happening right now. And that's what happens you'll see in stocks all the time. People panic sell. You know, famously, you can look behind me. People always go, why do you have an Elon poster behind you? First of all, I've had this for many, many, many years. I've been investing in Tesla since, I don't know, 216, 2017, somewhere around there. And I've seen Tesla stock go from when I got in. This is before all the stock splits. And if you're not familiar with the stock split, it's basically... Say the stock gets to $1,000, the company's like, we're going to do a two-to-one split. So we cut it in half. So you have one share at $1,000. Now you have two shares at $500. That's all it is. You know, I think Tesla did like a seven-to-one or six-to-one or something. And then they did like a four-to-one or something. I can't remember. But I had it before all those splits. Got in at around like, I think it was like 180 a share. I saw it go all the way up to like four-something a share. And I was like, oh, 450 or something. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then it went all the way down. To below what I got in at, at in a course of like so for like two years it went up and then it just pretty much dropped within like nine months and I'm like oh my gosh but then you know what happened it went all the way up to like two thousand dollars a share and so you can't focus on the short term you have to think of things as a long term play especially with comic books that's what I kind of preach on my channel is this, I'm more talking about long term investing not short term I do dabble a little bit in short term but more it's about long-term holding that book for a long period of time. You always see people with like comic collections like, oh my gosh, you have this book, that book, this book. Well, they also bought it 20, 30, 40 years ago. And then you always think to yourself, I can never afford it now. It's like, yeah, it's expensive now. And usually they just go up over time. Yes, there's gonna be ebbs and flows. There's gonna be times where it goes down, but there's times it goes really high up. And that's just how the market works. But if you believe in a comic or a character and you think it's a good long-term investment, same with the stock. Tesla's out here having record quarters every single quarter. So to me, I look at it as like, oh, this is a great investment. I don't care what's going on with all the drama. All that to me says, okay, they're still a good company having record breaking quarters. Hey, it's cheap. It's on sale because my intent is long term, just like with comic books. This is long term. I'm not talking about short term where it's like, oh, you know, short terms like within a couple of months to a year, long terms like five plus years, 10, 15 years down the line. That's what you have to think about. So I'm going to go into some examples of what the difference between like kind of what you can see from long term investing. So don't focus on the now. You have to be focusing on five, 10, 15, 20 years down the line. So let's take the big boy of them all. Action Comics number one. Now everyone's going to say that's a blue chip comic, right? That's like blue chip stock. That's guaranteed all this kind of stuff. So let's see what's been going on. So in Action Comics number one, back when the GPA started reporting, back in 2003, a 4.0 was sold for 85000 Now, this is going to be before the comic boom because, you know, that was just everything was sky high. So let's just see how it did before that ever started. So the last sale that it had before the comic boom was in 2018, and it sold for 573,000. That is up 574%. And over the course of 15 years, from 2003 to 2018, that is an average turn of 38%. So yeah, there's gonna be some where it's gonna go down, some's going up. Now this is a really rare book. This doesn't sell that often. It's just like one every couple of years, pretty much. So let's look at something that's way more common. Let's look at a New Mutants 98. Now I put this on my list before and I say this is a good long term. Now, if you look at the New Mutants 98, look at this graph. You can see it coming all the way along. And then right around towards the end of 2020, you see a huge jump. Like it literally triples in price and has been dropping significantly since. But let's take it before that huge spike. Let's before that, or whatever, the comical boom, whatever you want to call it, before that happened and you had an influx of all this money coming in and everything went sky high. So before that, let's see how it was doing. So back in 2002, it averaged $152 for a 9.8. Yes, a CGC graded 9.8. Before the comic boom, in September of 2020, it was averaging 
That is an 18-year return of 510%, which on average was 28% a year. So as you can see, a more common book that sells all the time, there's lots of them in a 9.8, you can see that it was averaging about 28% a year since the GPA started recording prices. So all the way back in 2002. Now, if you look at that graph, you can see points where it's like it started dropping for maybe a year or two, and then it came right back up. And see, that's the thing. You can't just look at the short term. You have to have vision and look at the long term and, and you have to be, hey, this is a good investment based off the data and the research I've done. And if trends as continue as they have been for 100 years, then that's probably a sound investment. You have to base it on the character. That's why I don't like short terms. And I really don't like jumping into new characters too much. It's like, oh, so-and-so, this new hot book that just came out, a modern book. And I'm like, that has no track record. You know, the S&P 500, on average, since they started t tabulating it, since like, I think in the 1950s, has gotten you a return about like, it's like 10.8% or something like that. The S&P 500, if you're not familiar with that, that's an index fund. And that basically takes the top 500 companies and, you know, that's like a fund for all the 500 top companies. And you can invest in a fund that follows those companies. Warren Buffett, who's probably the greatest investor of all time. If you don't know who he is, look him up. But anyways, he has said multiple times, just take, take your money and put it in the S&P 500. That is the simplest and easiest way and overall has the best returns. And it's the safest thing to do. Now, you might think to yourself, okay, Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time, he's telling me to put money in the S&P 500, that's great long-term, averages around 10, 11% a year. Now, imagine all of a sudden you took his advice, and then you took his advice, you know, around December of 2021. Since December of 2021, it's dropped nearly 20%. So in a year's time, the S&P 500, which Warren Buffett says, oh, it's the greatest, just put your money in there, who's the supposedly supposed to be the best investor there is, literally tells you to put your money in there and you invest at the peak of the market. And guess what happens? It's dropped 20% in one year. You're supposed to get 10% return every year. Now you're getting negative 20. But that's the thing. You're looking at the short term. Your people need to stop looking at the short term. If you're making a sound investment into something, then you need to look at the long term. The S&P 500 is obviously the top 500 companies. Now, do you think that's a bad idea to invest in those? And guess what? Investing does come with risk. That's the definition of investing. You're investing money, hoping to gain some more money in return. Sometimes you lose money. You can invest in other companies and they go down. I was watching Tony Robbins one day and he was explaining this story about how to invest and you shouldn't try to time the market. So many people are fixated on timing the perfect time to get in the market. And actually the best time to get in the market is just get in, just get in and steadily invest. And so this is a story that he told that I'm going to tell you. And these are based on real facts, real figures. Obviously the people's names are made up, but these are actual facts and figures that you can follow along with. So imagine if there's three people, Tiffany, Brittany, and Sarah, and they're all able to save $200 a month and they want to invest it in the S and P 500 index fund. And this will be from the last 40 years, from 1982 to 2022. Each will have different marketing strategies of how they jump into the market. So here are the major market crashes. You have Black Tuesday, it dropped by 33% back in the 80s. Then you have the Kuwait War, it dropped it by 20%. Then obviously you had the dot-com crash, dropped it by almost 50% in the early 2000s. Then the financial crash of 08, that dropped it by 56%. And then obviously you had the COVID crash that dropped it by 34%. Tiffany has terrible timing. She saves up $200 a month and puts it in a savings account and earns 3% interest, waiting for the perfect time to invest. But it turns out she has the worst timing. She dumped all of her savings into the market the day before the five crashes happened, but she never sold. Even with the terrible timing, thanks to her buy and hold strategy, Tiffany's $96,000 turned into $764,000. Then you got Brittany. Brittany also saved $200 a month in a savings account earning 3% interest waiting for the perfect time to buy in. And it turns out Brittany had the world's best market timing. She bought the day the market was at its very lowest after each of the five crashes. With her perfect timing, she was able to turn her money 
into $1.1 million. Then we have Sarah. Sarah didn't have much interest in watching the market or, or in trading. In fact, she only did one thing. On the day she opened her account in 1982, she set up $200 per month, auto invested into an index fund and never looked at her account again. She ended up with over $1.3 million. So in the end, remember, time in the market beats timing the market. Invest early and often. So that just shows you that if you're constantly trying to time the market, it doesn't really matter. Just get in when you can. So this works with, you know, so people out there that are thinking, oh, whether it be stocks or comics or anything, if you think it's a sound investment and you've done your research and your homework and you're like, this is probably a good one to get in, you know, whether it be a stock or a comic or whatever it is you're investing in, time is what you want on your side. That's why it's all about long term. If you focus on the short term, it'll look terrible. So let's look at this amazing fantasy 15. Back in 2002, a 3.5 would run you about a little over $2,000. Right before the comic book boom, it was running you about a little over $19,000. That is up 861%. That is an increase over 18 years of 48% a year. Now, if you took that same 861% from, you know, 19,000 back in 2020, and then you did another 18 years, at you know making 861 percent which i don't think it's going to make but let's just say you did you know what that comic book be worth in about you know 18 20 years it'd be worth 185,000 for that same rate of return now you could say oh david's crazy that will never happen well at one point it started at 12 cents you know and then it moved up to a dollar then it moved up to five dollars and then so on and so forth now i honestly do not think that uh, a fantasy 15 is going to move up another eight, nine hundred percent in the next 18, 20 years. I think as it gets higher, but the percentages go down, but it becomes a little more stable. Just like an action comics number one is moving at 38 percent a year. You know, this is 48. So it's just going to slowly move down as things get more and more expensive. But to think that like, hmm, comics are never going to go much higher. They're already too high. Well, at one point, I remember when a comic book finally broke a million dollars. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then the next thing is two million, and then three million, and then five. And then who knows where it's gonna go from here. So the point of this, if you're worried about your investment because the market has dropped down and you're one of those people that maybe got unlucky and had terrible timing. If you bought the right books, over time, they'll eventually go back to where you purchased them at and even higher because you need long-term thinking. Stop thinking about the short term. In today's world, people are always looking for, I want to buy something now, and then in a month from now, I want it to 10x because they're so used to seeing things about crypto and NFTs and all that garbage about how it's like, oh, I bought, you know, I bought Dogecoin, you know, a year ago, and now I'm a billionaire. It's like, okay, yes. And there's also people that play the lottery and, you know, won the lottery. You can say that's an investment. I invest $5 into a ticket. And now, you know, I don't know what a ticket's worth these days, a hundred million, a billion dollars. That's, that's what you're hoping for. That's not really investing. You have to look at track records of things. And if you have a track record like comic books that have decades, if not almost a hundred years of consistent track records, that's good information that you can assume that's going to continue on. Now, anything can happen. But stop looking at the short term, look at the long term.